Hi, I'm Jim Rhodes, Artist Relations for Radial, and welcome to Radial on Record. Today, I'm joined by Grammy-nominated bass maestro, composer, musical director, and more, Nathan East. Welcome, Nathan. How are you? Good, thanks, Jim. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I really appreciate you taking the time and joining us today. Uh, first of all, I wanted to wish you a very happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's great to be alive. <laughs> And, at the end of 2020 yeah it's uh it's an interesting time first of all how's your family how's uh how's anita and uh, Noah and that sarah family's really good thanks i appreciate it there uh, i've heard from the kids and uh anita's you know my my solid rock um they're just blessed to have such a great family and, and one thing this year has given me an opportunity to is, is to be with them more and um uh, have some time with them. I'm usually uh, bags packed and, and out of the, out the front door. So uh, it's been a blessing to, to spend this much quality time with the family. Yeah. And in the, in the world that we've, that we've all been accustomed to uh, traveling um, for, for pleasure or business and then being at home uh, so much, it's uh, families are our whole life. Um, congratulations on the release of the, uh, the remastered best of four play 2020. Um, thank you. Yeah. I, I think, uh, was that the 15th release of the yes. As a matter of fact, officially, yeah, we, we, um, you know, there was a, there was a kind of a best of early on, but then they've, they've compiled a, a bunch of good songs and, and, uh, I can't believe, you know, 14 album releases, you know, I guess in over 30 years now. So. It's uh, it's something else to still be, you know, going. And I, I spoke with Bob James the other day. He was, he's nice. doing great. And Harvey and Lee, and Larry. <laughs> nice. And of course, Chuck, you know, I, <sighs> yesterday was his birthday. So I just mm -hmm. send up prayers to his family. And, and he's, he lives in my heart forever. Uh, always will. Such a talent. Yeah. Um, any plans for any foreplay dates? You know, at, at the moment, point? we have a... We have a cruise um, in about a year booked. To the, to, it's the uh, Paul Gauguin cruise, and it's with nice. Sandy Shore and um, um, smoothjazz.com and, and the Jazz Weekender that I usually host, um, which was the last gig that I did this year. It was in February up in Carmel. Okay. So uh, there's going to be a cruise, and, and it'll be the original lineup with Lee Rittenauer, uh, oh, nice. God willing, you know, yeah. in about a year. Actually, I um, spoke with uh, Lee, and I can't remember his, his uh, assistant's name, Greg, um, at NAM just after the fires. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, tragically. I mean, so many people lost homes and studios and whatnot. And he was looking to replace a bunch of radio gear from us. And uh, we've been back and forth on that. And just a lovely, a lovely man, just so talented. Uh, one of the greats. Um, and the band, I mean, for a play um listen to the early releases um i think 93 was the first first In release 90, 91 i think 91 very first yeah um i think we recorded in 90 so and then first one came out in 91 which yes, which we all were blown away <laughs> with the uh you know like instrumental music being received that well you know, i think it sold over a million records and so that's that's a lot of fun and next thing you know there's 15 releases <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, you know, and uh, and and it's great because it it was only meant to be kind of like a little adjunct to our busy careers, you know. Bob, Bob had this idea, mm -hmm. you know. It's nice to be in a band, but then you you can be sort of a sideman and a leader at the same time, you know. And, and it takes all the pressure off this kind of like a democratic twenty five percent, you know, <laughs> responsibility. So we, uh, it, it's worked pretty well. Nice. Fabulous, fabulous body of work. Um, I wanted to touch on some uh, some priorities. I guess maybe some things that would obviously resonate with you. Uh, maybe aside from the music, and I would say first and foremost, would that be family for you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, family is kind of like for me ground zero for you know with my family that I grew up with, and we're we're all on a group chat that we we talk every day. Uh, seven kids, you know, and nice. and um, and then and then my immediate family with Sarah, Noah, and Anita, you know, we're all on a group chat 
several times a day and and um, that just seems to be the starting point for everything that I do you know and, and the inspiration beautiful keeps things in perspective and and, and grounded you, you're you come from a musical family everybody musical in you in in the household when you were growing up yeah when we were growing up it, we all had piano lessons you know so that was kind of like a obligatory you know and and then there were uh, there was always music there uh, not everybody did it like the folks played piano not professionally mm-hmm. but they could they could go to the piano and and uh, crank out a, a song and then you know we started picking up my brother ray uh, he was the singer so he started singing wow. in church and when the folk masses happened in san diego then david picked up the guitar and he he was playing and then i picked up the wow. bass and and uh, Everybody kind of, you know, my sisters played flute and French horn, wow. uh, guitar, trombone. I mean, there was, there was music around the household. Family band. Um, yeah, you, definitely. You come from a, your father was in uh, aviation. And yes. Um, you're, are, are you still an active pilot? Yeah, I'm not current at the moment, but um, I was just, matter of fact, Chuck Yeager, we just lost him today. Ah, that's right. I and that, um, sadly. He signed, I said it. In 2003, I set a uh, a world speed record in my my airplane. It's a Lancer 4P. It's a experimental kit plane, but uh, it goes you know 330 miles an hour. And so uh, I did a I set a world speed record, and he signed the certificate on the uh, on the on the record. So I kind of wow. have a little, great little memory. And then yeah, Dad was a aircraft design engineer at General Dynamics Convair. Designed the swept wing of the F-16 uh, oh, no and the uh, C-5A, the tail section. I mean, he had, there were always drawings of airplanes and everything at home. So uh, we had quite the extensive aviation upbringing. Is that, is that, um, to segue, is that how you moved to San Diego? That's, yes, that's, that's how um, the family moved from San Diego to Philadelphia. But at that point, he had four, four, four kids. Mm-hmm. And um, his his job took him to uh, General Dynamics Convair, and um, so for many years. So growing up around that, you became a pilot just uh, running the family, or or, or well, what? My brother David got his pilot's license first, and he and I was thinking, how oh, how do you do that? And he you know <laughs> went to one of his lessons with him, and uh, so I kind of tagged along. He he's been like my inspiration for a lot of things, music and. That's so fantastic. Taking along, and wow. uh, so I got my license, and my younger brother Marcel got his after that, and and James got his. So we have four private pilots in the family. Have your own airline. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and the Jeep James. Used to oh work my the goodness! As, as a lines man, you know, we, so we it's it's in the blood. That's so awesome. I mean, you're you're. Uh, I mean, you live in L.A. Um, L.A. area, um, but you're. Your connection to San Diego and the uh, UCSD, your fundraising for the educational programs, uh, is that still ongoing? Absolutely. Um, I'm actually uh, an official board member now of the UC San Diego nice. Foundation. And, um, Fantastic. And so that's you know near and dear to my heart. And, and one of my um, organizations that I'm starting up is East for Education. Nice. Uh, because, you know, just... Education to me is is probably one of the most important important things we can do. You know, once we once we're healthy and once we're <sighs> clear of a lot of things, you know, the education is is what uh, continues to move us move us forward. Well, you've been so involved in that for so long. I mean, with your work with uh, Artist Works, um, you know, right? Instructing exactly. and and whatnot. Are you busy with that? Pretty busy with that. Yeah, still. Uh, um, it's it's coming up on about ten years since I've been. Nice. On the faculty there, lots of great um, faculty as well. You know, with with probably about forty faculty members, and wow. Paul Gilbert teaches guitar. And, yeah. Um, you know, Chuck Loeb was a teacher there. Yeah. And, uh, lots of lots of great um, instructors there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter Erskine on the drum program, and and um, so it's been fun to have students from all around the world and be able to teaching is one of the things I used to do but got too busy. So yeah. by doing it online, I'm able to uh, reach a lot more people, and and so I have I have hundreds of students from around the world. And Amazing, it's fun yeah. to uh, share videos and just. Uh, <laughs> I, how, 
with that much going on, how do you, how do you stay? I mean, you look great. How do you stay healthy in a lifestyle that is so demanding and so busy? Um, you're, you, 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 you do meditation and how do you stay healthy overall? Bless you. No, I mean, it's, a, <laughs> it's an, it's an effort, you know, I mean, every morning is, is meditation, you know, first thing. Yeah. Every morning, every morning. Yeah. Yeah. If I can do it twice a day, uh, that's even nice. better, but at least starting the day with that 20 minutes, uh, just gets me in the right, uh, you know, just puts me in the right mood. And, and then, you know, my prayer and followed by just, Fantastic. again, just trying to get a, something that happens every day. That's, that's, um, that's a good habit, you know? Um, well, I drink, my, I drink my hot water and lemon with a little cayenne pepper in there nice. in the morning, <laughs> kind of like an internal shower. And then from there, you know, we, uh, I, I study yoga. So, you know, a few times a week. Oh, with that's yoga. Good. And uh, so those are kind of simple things that you could do. And then just the, all the general things, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't get too overly indulged sure. in anything. <laughs> well, it helps to clear the mind. I mean, meditation and yoga, I mean, aside from just breathing and, and you know, clearing your mind and whatnot, uh, you being a night owl, I mean, you could probably do meditation at one or two in the morning. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the other thing about that I like about him because sometimes if you get a nice deep one, it's like, it's almost like making up for a, a for sleep, you know? Because yeah. It just, it just calms every, every part of the body. And so I, it, it's uh, fascinating. You know, George Harrison was the one that got me into meditation in the mid eighties. No and kidding. I was in London and he, he, uh, he kind of schooled me and then took me under his wing and then and introduced me to some people at the, TM center over there. And then I went in Oxford and kind wow. of got my official meditation mantra and everything. And it was great. It was just That's like, fantastic. Yeah. So we used to meditate a lot together and, and um, wow, he's another guy I really miss. Oh, no kidding. Uh, today, the anniversary of John as well. Oh yeah, my goodness. Crazy awesome. times, crazy times. Uh, I want to switch gears a little bit. And first of all, um, you've known Pete, Janice for a long time with radial and uh, you've been a long time radial artist of ours and we're just blessed to to have you as part of the family and I wanted to just a say thanks for the support over the years yeah, talk about yeah. you know it just it you know we're, we're fortunate to work with a, a lot of great artists and, and having you as part of the roster is uh, it helps helps us be who we are and, and what we do. But uh, I wanted to just touch on a, some of the gear that uh, you've used over the years, the, the Firefly, um, the dual input uh, tube DI. Um, is that still in use or? Right, right there, part of my rig, you know. Nice. And, and as a matter of fact, I, I, I like the Firefly so much, I wrote a song called Firefly. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Thank you. Yeah, that ended, that ended up being a... Uh, that ended up being a, a fun song to play and, and just yeah that that box was perfect for me because um i could plug two bases into it so yeah. i had my upright and i had the electric and then i had you know different uh different levels for each one so the nice. engineers really loved it nice um there's a couple other things i, I think over the years the bass bone i think Pete yeah. had sent you a bass bone in the very early stages of that um, that release. I think that's back around 2004, 2005. Wow. Um, and then the we revised it, came out with the the bass bone V2. I think um, we'd sent you one of those a while ago. Did you ever get much use out of that, or you just stick with the Firefly? Well, the Firefly is, is my main axe, but the it it is cool with the um, bass bone. It's it's so. Uh, portable that I can always have it in the mm -hmm. case, you know, nice. And, um, um, especially, you know, just for picking up gigs where I don't have my official rig with me, you know, yeah. that, that one's really good. But yeah, I, I remember I had to get a couple of firefly fireflies cause I had, I had two rigs. Yeah. And one was in England. One was here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get by without it. Well, we appreciate the support. Thanks. Uh, 
for all the years that you've been uh, supporting us for with those devices. If you need any, if you need a replacement or if you need a, a third rig, <laughs> just let me know. I'll, I'll send it wherever you, wherever you need it sent. Yeah, so, I uh, appreciate it. I, you know, Peter just goes to show you how long, you know, how quick time goes by. Cause when oh, yeah. Peter retired, I said, wait, retired. Nobody <laughs> retires. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Cause you can't retire. I think, I think that was the last time I saw you was actually at NAM. Um, Pete was still there. I think that was around the yeah, time that he exactly. was announcing yeah, that he had sold the company. And uh, we saw you. And unfortunately, with NAM not happening this year, I know you're always busy at NAM. Uh, and we appreciated you dropping by um, when we did see you the last time. Because I know you're, the demands on your schedule and your time, especially at that show. You're a musical director there, aren't you? For uh, Yes, for, for the Yamaha um, yeah. shows that we do there, which which that was one of the last concerts I did this year was with uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and mm, nice. we, had, we had the best time out there, you know, on the plaza. Yeah, always just just a great time. Virtually, it's going to be interesting. We'll see how uh, how this year how this year goes. But uh, yeah, yeah, thank thanks thanks for dropping by the Nam booth and and coming by to say hi to us every time you're you're there. So we appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, no, Nam Nam has been uh, uh, yeah. you know, it's been kind of like the the DNA of the music, <laughs> <laughs> our lifeline. It is our DNA. It, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. Um, also know that uh, in your studio, you were mentioning you're doing some stuff with Eric, uh, Eric Clapton recently. Um, you still have the prime acoustic uh, treatment from, from us in your Absolutely. studio? I think about you every day when I go in there. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, I know the treatment is, has been great. And, and um, you guys were so kind to, to send me, you know, it's like a custom pieces mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send you a picture of the studio nice um, because it, it's still one of my favorite places to spend you know you go in there and spend hours at at a time so it has to kind of feel good and um yeah those those treatments just kind of caress you you know thank you yeah the, I, I recall there was some broadband panels uh sent down and some recoil stabilizer the pads for your monitors and stuff like yeah. that if you need any clouds or any bass traps or or anything just uh reach out to me and, ah, beautiful. and let me know yeah. happy to help happy to help anytime um i wanted to switch gears a little bit um is are there any projects that you have on the horizon that you can speak about um that might be exciting for some of the viewers yeah, I mean, uh, I've been in the studio with Ringo recently, and his new record's coming out, so nice. pretty excited about that. And and as well, uh, we're going over to uh, play some of the first shows in May with Eric Clapton at at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Fantastic! Uh, so that's that's pretty exciting. Like that'll be the first time, kind of actually getting on a plane and, and flying somewhere <laughs> like that. And, um, <laughs> You know, since I've been home, uh, my son and I have been playing a lot more together. So we've we've decided to do a duo album. Fantastic. And uh, he's he's turned into one of my favorite musicians. Well, the apple doesn't fall far from, from the tree. <laughs> oh, thanks, no, but he's, he really he really gets it. And and um, he wanted more than anything. He wanted a Hammond organ. So we got him. Wow. A, we found uh, a nice B three in one of the churches. Nice. And, and um, so he's in, in just a matter of a few months, he's really taken to the thing and, and sounds amazing on it. So we're looking forward to, to uh, doing a little solo project together because he's nice. played on both my both of my albums, mm -hmm. uh, my solo albums, and we've done duets together. So uh, I think it'd be fun to have an album with that. Isn't he uh, pitch perfect? And he has he has perfect pitch. It was amazing. <laughs> I discovered that uh, when he was about five years old and, and I was... Uh, playing a little game i'd play a note on the bass i say play the note that daddy plays and, and i'd play a note Kidding. and then he would just he would play the same note he wouldn't peck around looking for it and everything and and i was trying to figure out how does <laughs> five years old do you know you know where all the notes are but it's amazing he used to he used to be That's able to fantastic hear, uh in the car he'd, he'd say he'd say that song is a little sharper like a michael jackson song would come on and that's in what he's Kidding. talking about and quincy jones used to speed up the the tape a little so it would make the song run you know a little more a little faster a little more exciting and so he'd, he'd even notice like the song was a, a little faster than uh, than normal so it's, it's amazing that's, really that's good incredible I, I saw um um i think an interview you were doing with was it patricia from artist works oh yeah uh -huh. and uh you were playing bass Noah in the background playing piano and you you both were being interviewed in the show he's, he's a 
beautifully talented musician and his piano playing was just fantastic. And you're sitting there just playing bass and jamming along and answering questions. And it was great dynamics. I mean, it must be uh, rewarding and um, awesome. gratifying to actually play with your son. It's you know? the absolute best thing ever, you know, and then we're, we're down there. I have a, I have a timer on one of the lights in the living room and, and so it goes off maybe around midnight. And then one night I just kept resetting it an hour, <laughs> another hour. And then at four o'clock in the morning, we said, maybe we should go to bed, you know? <laughs> so you are a night owl. <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we have the most fun. And um, for, you know, for a father, it's just, it's unbelievable. You, you say, you know, piano lessons. And then next thing you know, you're, you're doing records together. That is, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's really fun. It, to, further to that, you just touched on a few uh, a few artists in your career. I mean, as most of us know, I mean, you're the most recorded bass player in history. And with all the records you've done, how do you face the constant level of such high expectation with the artists that you lend so much to? Do you, you, know do what, you feel any pressure? Or? There's so many, so many great people that, that, come before me and that you stand on their shoulders and, and I mean talk about most recorded plays like you know people like Carol Kay who you know when I first started she was she was uh, doing all these film scores and, and TV shows and records and I, I was listening to her and, and she probably I think she has like thousands and thousands yeah. of Leland Sklar you know yeah Lee and, yeah. and so I think if you live long enough and you you know you're fortunate enough to get older and I I've been doing this now for, uh, you know, four decades, pretty, pretty regularly. <laughs> it, just, it, it amazes me because, um, you know, you walk in the studio with Quincy Jones or Michael Jackson and the, the, the bar is pretty high. Yeah. It's pretty high. So I've, I've grown accustomed to, um, that kind of pressure of, okay you can get it and get it right get it fast and, and make it good you know so that's well, it and to this day that's what i aspire to uh, still just trying to make sure um it, it's good enough worthy of me being being the guy that get the gets the call well thanks for sh sharing that your talent with with all of us because i mean from daft punk to michael and eric and stevie wonder and the list is so long um i wanted to ask you uh, I think your your first break was was it with Barry White? Barry White, yeah, I was I was on tour with Barry White and the Love and Limited Orchestra when I was 16 years old. Which <laughs> just it's it's kind of like it, it pinch, was, yourself. <laughs> yeah, it, it pinch yourself. Yeah, and and it gave me a really good idea that oh, yeah, this is what I want to do. You know, um, he hired our band called Power in San Diego and. And we, we played for a Stax review. So there's Rufus Thomas and a lot of people from the oh, label. Oh, sweet. And, um, and Barry White was one of the artists that we backed. And the next week, he asked us to come to L.A. to, to meet with him. And we all went to his office. And, and he said, you know, he wanted to take us all on the road. And we were just, you know. What a break. Each other high fives. <laughs> <And> <laughs> the next thing you know, you know, I'm, I'm playing, you know, because... You know, when you're in a band locally, you're you're playing clubs and, you know, you're you're kind of like doing the top 40 circuit. And then the next thing you know, we're <laughs> at Madison Square Garden and uh, the Apollo Theater. And wow. Kennedy Center and Kobo uh, Arena in Detroit. It was just yeah. like, wow, this is crazy. Is, 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 uh, was Gene Page, is it Gene Page? Gene Page, yeah. Was he the, the MD then? And he he was the arranger for a lot of the records. Uh, he wasn't the MD um, on the road, but he um, he's the one that really, too, gave me uh, a big break in, in recording because he, he did all those records. And when I started working with Gene, he literally started calling me for everything that he was doing. Wow. Know? And he stayed busy around the clock, you know, Whitney Houston and the Jacksons and uh, yeah. Dionne Warwick, Johnny Mathis. I remember some of these first sessions I did with Gene. I'm going, man. This guy is the, he's the best. So is that how you got introduced into the circle that uh, where, where Quincy would have call, been calling you for? for Gene, for... Gene Page sort of uh, took me under his wing. And, the, and those, those sessions, 
kind of led to a lot of calls. And obviously, you had people like Lee Rittenauer and Ray Parker mm -hmm. Jr. and on those sessions. So they were going, kind of spreading the word a bit. And and when I heard from Quincy, like that was that was the marker, you know, where I I, I made a mark in my diary, you know, mm -hmm. this is the day. And and actually, he called me to play on. Um, he called me to play on Off the Wall, and the day, the Monday of the session, I was leaving to go on tour with Kenny Loggins, so I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I had to turn down <laughs> Off the Wall, and it was obviously I was, uh, I was, I was hurt. <laughs> and thankfully, he called me for bad. And well, uh, yeah, and the list goes on. It's 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 mind boggling. To us, know, I, the the list is so long and and such a part of our uh, our upbringing and our, our DNA musically. You're such a massive part of that. So thank you for all that because I mean we grew up listening to all of it. Um, and one of my all time heroes, uh, Luke. Um, that I did see you briefly at uh, Henderson, Nevada. You were there with Toto. Wow. And I remember um, after the show, you were walk you you were walking toward us and you stopped and talked to my wife and I. And it was right around the time that your because we talked about your solo album being on the charts in Japan at the time when we were in uh, just outside of Vegas. And uh, wow. I remember seeing you with uh, Simon was in the band. Yeah. And oh, the band was so good. Joe that, on vocals, just yeah. Lovely. Joe was killing it. I, I can't, I can't believe how great Joe Williams sings every night. You know, he hits those notes, and it's like, bro, how do you do that? You know, yeah. it's he like he, he gets, gets better. better. <laughs> yeah, he gets, he gets better. Um, he and Luke both have new solo albums. They do. Yeah. So uh, I, I managed to, uh, to play on Joe's, and um, oh, nice. And he's, he just, well, he comes from. He comes from royalty anyway. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. The and apple doesn't fall far from the tree there either. <laughs> John Williams is, is, uh, you know, is, is Mozart. <laughs> yeah. Iconic. Yeah. It's funny, Luke mentioning, you know, sitting in, you know, in the bedroom with, uh, with Joe as kids and, you know, his, his dad's working on soundtracks and, you know, the doo doo. Right. Exactly. <laughs> hear that coming from the, the studio or... coming from the other room and the guy and he the man yeah. is writing it you know yeah it's incredible yeah. well that's uh, the thing i love about the you know when you when you listen think about the stories and everything it's just uh music music is amazing i feel very blessed that music has been the sort of the, the path that i took and it's been kind of like my my ticket to so many wonderful experiences and and for us as well thanks thank goodness you did choose that path <laughs> um speaking of um your path with yamaha is is massive i mean 40 40 years you're you're the face of the brand and the inspiration to a world of bass players not only for the yamaha bass itself but um can you comment a little bit about that i mean that's you know, it's, part of your history it speaks for itself in terms of the company. They've had such a, a great um, artist relationship mm -hmm. uh, department as well. And that, that was really the first thing that, that um, kind of I noticed. I, Abraham Laboreal was playing a, a Yamaha bass and I was at A&M Records uh, listening to him record. I think it was Dave Grusin or something. Wow. And he, uh, uh, he was playing. And I said, what is that? You know, so he... He finally, uh, so he, he invited me to look at his bass, and it was a Yamaha, and th that was in 1980, 81. Wow. And I went to Japan with Lee maybe uh, um, shortly after that. So mm -hmm. in 81, I officially got my first Yamaha bass and, nice. and kind of been playing them ever since. Yeah. And as you can see, I mean, I have a few different basses. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few. But, uh, you know, because they're, they're, they're all kind of special in, in – uh, certain way but the Yamaha relationship has has now spanned you know 40 years and it's yeah. unbelievable to think about um, how much fun I've had playing their instruments and then when I did my solo albums it's on the Yamaha Entertainment Group label yes. you know so so the uh, 
yeah, the, the, the family is in, is tight. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Are you, are you predominantly a, a five and or six string player? It's five predominantly, predominantly, and then the six, um, especially kind of more on the solo. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, but five and six. You're, uh, I, I saw you recently, um, the, the, uh, SLB 300, the, uh, the upright, the, the silent bass. How, oh, yeah. how's that? And that's a great instrument. It's, um, one of those, um, things where they keep improving it. So now they have like these modeled microphone sounds mm -hmm. uh, that you can switch between. And they really spend a lot of time trying to make it sound, um, you know, authentic, you know, nothing sounds like the big wood upright, but. Uh, for traveling around the world and taking that thing with me, it's a pretty good close match. And 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 I've even been in places like the Hollywood Bowl where the engineer said, "This is even better than than the uh, you know the the 500 year old <laughs> bass." You know, <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, it's uh, the company is uh, they don't uh, their bar is so high that they they don't ever let you down. Yeah, well, a fantastic instrument. I remember you mentioning something. It was a memory of yours. Um, you're with Herbie Hancock, and he was lifting your bass off the carousel at an airport. <laughs> and I thought, well, if you, if you had the silent bass, it would have been lighter for him to lift, right? <laughs> you know, it, it, it it was crazy because we get to the, you know, I think it was Spain or somewhere. My first gig with Herbie Hancock, you know, and I'm I'm blown away that just he <laughs> the call, you know, and Cal Yuta and I are standing, we're standing around the, uh, the turnstile, you know, and the the gear starts coming around in suitcases, and then the, there's Herbie taking my bass <laughs> bass case off. Like, what are you doing? He's oh yeah, this is how I get my exercise, and I'm going, bro, <laughs> you're Herbie Hancock, you know we. <laughs> We're about to do a gig, and he's taking my gear off of the, you know, airport. Up that's why he is the best. Uh, that's funny. There, a couple of years ago, back to Nam, um, we were just releasing a uh, uh, the our Key Largo small, uh, compact little keyboard mixer, and Peter Peter Janus was uh, was demoing some keyboards, and he's playing away. He's got the Key Largo going. And he looks over his shoulder, and who's standing right beside him is Herbie. Herbie came by the booth to say hi to us. And was watching wow. Pete. Was watching Pete play keyboards, and Pete just <laughs> froze. He stopped, and he just looked at Herbie. He goes, "You want to play?" <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> yeah, no Her Her Herbie, Herbie didn't play, but uh, he came by to say hi, and I and I thought, wow, wow. that was. Uh, you look up, and nice. yeah, was was, there he the is. Battle. Yeah, he had he had about seven or eight people with him but uh anyway every, every, every band learned you know chameleon oh, <laughs> yeah uh, such an influence uh speaking of influence i mean for you i mean uh, you know james jamerson and charles mingus and and mccartney and verdeen i mean the list is is long and i know you're such a huge fan of you know like tower of power and earth wind and fire and all that yeah are there any new bass players that stand out in the market today that really catch your ear and inspire you? Yeah, you know, all you have to do is go uh, on Instagram and start scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's millions of them. <laughs> there's millions of them. I mean, uh, the uh, Gabriel Severns is, is a friend of mine. Oh, he's a nice. little youngster. He's, he's fantastic. Fantastic, you know? yeah. And he puts in the time, you know, he's, he's, he's connected to his instrument for at least a couple hours a day. And, and wow. uh, if I had done that when I was his age, I'd be a million times better. <laughs> oh, yeah, but David, <laughs> yeah, but when you're doing five or seven, five, six, seven sessions a day, seven days a week, I mean, yeah, uh, you're, you're pretty much connected. You, you're, you're touching the instrument every day anyway. Yeah. So, um, the 10,000 hours, regardless of how you get there, that's um, important. But yeah, Justin yeah. Lee Schultz, he, he's, he's a keyboard player, but he's, he picked up the bass, and now he's turned into a frightening bass player, you know. Fantastic. And um, so it's, it's fun, you know, just I, I think uh, 
the more and more people that jump in, they realize that, mm -hmm. that wow, this is just more than anything. It's just fun. Thanks for sharing that. Are there any um, influencers outside of music that you can speak to that maybe have impacted you just in life in general? Are there, are there any influence influencers that, that just are part of your DNA that, that you can, that you can mention? Well, obviously I've, I've learned a lot from the ones in inside the music business, like Quincy Jones mm -hmm. and Gene mm -hmm. Page, uh, Eric Clapton, Phil Collins. These are people that to me have some of the most amazing work ethics, um, ever you know and and they they're humble and all the all the traits that i aspire to be you know these guys have and and they're generous with their with their wisdom and knowledge um outside of uh the music business um tony robbins has become a dear friend over the years and i'm telling you what you know <laughs> he he puts his money where his mouth is you know and we've been on he invited me down to fiji a few times um, he has a beautiful, beautiful uh, resort down there. Actually. That's right. And that, that kind of led to me. I fell in love so much with it that I, I got a little place down there. Nice. Well. And, so you're, um, you're, you're close friends with Tony? Yeah. Yeah. He's nice. a dear, dear friend. Yeah. Phenomenal yeah. human being. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And he, he was, um, he used to live in the San Diego area, you know, so um, just a, a, a generous, kind, considerate, very passionate human being, you know, and, and, and a lot of traits that I really, really enjoy, you know, so. Um, That's amazing. It's, it's fun hanging out with him. Yep. That's amazing. There's maybe Bruno. that's, maybe that's Tony. <laughs> Look at this. This is, uh, <laughs> let me see if you can see, uh, Verdine White. <laughs> is, no, really? <laughs> <laughs> Gonna... Yeah, we're talking about in influencers. <laughs> oh man, I'll I'll say, hey, Bertine, I'll call you back. <laughs> tell tell them Jim from Radio says hi. I, okay, I saw we'll him do. when they were in town uh, about two years ago with Chicago. I went down and saw him, and he's he is one of the most lovely human beings I've I've ever met. Not um, only from a musical perspective, just as a a beautiful spirit. I mean, he was just so welcoming and made us feel part of the family right there during the day i mean it was so, so it you was know so Bertine. Nice. yeah oh he, he's such he? a sweet guy yeah he's the best you know the the reason i like that's my f first p base in, in the corner there and and uh it used to be like white now you know <laughs> over the years <laughs> but i saw him playing a white bass he, he pulled his shirt off and he was playing a white bass down at the sports arena in san diego and, and i went out and got a white bass you know <laughs> i said i want to be like him nice I grew up. yeah and, and uh oh. the sweetest man ever though yeah i mean not only an influence but uh m you must feel blessed to, to to be close friends with with somebody like that who's inspired so many and oh, such man. great music i mean part of our the fabric of, of music from the beginning. Um, Absolutely. An amazing pioneer. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit and just touch on something that I know that is really special and close to your heart and that's students. Um, uh, and you mentioned, you know, you, you, you teach at, at Artist Works. What advice would you give to students or somebody new wanting to break into the business? What advice would you, would you have for them? Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's different now. It's funny, Bob James and I have this, um, we laugh about it because he says when anybody asks him uh, what they should do, he says, don't, don't touch it. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> Stay away from it at all costs, you know. And then if they're, obviously, if they're ambitious enough to keep going, you know, they'll, they'll overcome. But, but they're, um, you, you got to love it, first of all, you know. Yeah. And it's not about doing it for money or recognition, but you just have to have that love that you'll do it you'll do it your whole life and you'll do it until your last day, like BB King, you know, just, <sighs> the king. just play. And, and, and so that's one of the things you have to have that love for it. And it, it can't be associated with, I want to get famous. I want to make a lot of money. It's just have to, you just have to love it, you know? And, and, and I still love it. You know, I pick up the bass sometimes before I go to bed. And then finally I just have to, talk myself into going to bed because I'm just having too much fun playing, you know? <laughs> and it's like, okay, put the bass down, go uh -huh. to bed. <laughs> For know? the love of it, right? 
yeah for the absolute love of it so i and and then just get ready because it's uh it's one of the most rewarding things you can ever do but at the same time you know you don't know what lies beyond you know uh, rejection and and everything else like that so um you got to kind of mentally be be prepared for it nice well having said that um boy i could i could talk to you for hours um in closing i want to uh i want to say that all of us here at radial um we are are blessed to have you as part of our artist roster and part of our family um appreciate the support um and again like i mentioned earlier you, you, artists like you are, are help us um keep the dream alive and do what we do and and who we are you're part of who we are um, I wish you and your as well, you know. <laughs> thank, thank you, Nathan. Um, wish you and your family certainly uh, good health and a, and a safe holiday season coming up. Um, oh, thank you. And, and uh, what do you what do you say? You want to say hi to Verdine real quickly? I mean, sure, absolutely. My brother, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Just blessing. And actually, I was in the middle of a, an interview with Jim Rhodes from Rad- Radial Engineering, and I, I believe you know him. Hey, buddy. And so he says hello. <laughs> yeah. So good to see you. Absolutely. Hope you're well, my friend. Yeah. yeah. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. We, you know what? I, I was just talking about influences, and there you are right at the top of all my influences. So I just want to say thank you again. <laughs> Made another yeah. one. I can't believe it. And uh, God is great, uh, you know. Absolutely, and uh, and, uh, and and I'm sure you're holding up good with everybody. You know, I was I was telling Shelly last night. I said, you know, we have been trying to plan dinner forever, but we will do this. You know, thought about you know. You know, 2021. I promise you, we will have dinner. Give Shelly my love, and and we love you guys so much. And and uh, it, it's a blessing to be alive right now. Yeah. Absolutely, I, that, that's what I was going to call you and say. It's a blessing, and I, and uh, you know you take. I know you're taking care of yourself. You, you know you stand diligent. You know all that kind of stuff. You know trying to be like you. <laughs> but, I, but I love you. Go back to the interview. Happy birthday, alrighty, okay. I love you, Verdine. Take care. Thanks so much. Thanks, Verdine. God bless you. Bye bye. Come on. I mean, that, that's a that's a nice birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> Verdine White, earth uh, and fire, you know, just see what kind of life I have. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's incredible. Um, you're incredible. And thanks so much for making the time today for anybody that's watching uh, to get in uh, more information about Nathan, um, Nathan East.com, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, Twitter at Nathan East. Also on artworks.com. Uh, Artist works, yeah. If, yeah, if they're looking to uh, inquire about lessons, they can just hit the drop-down menu and find you there, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of great students out there. And I and, uh, just want to encourage everybody to be safe. I hope we all mm-hmm. uh, make, make it to another year. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring on 2021. <laughs> bring on 2021 quickly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll definitely uh, thank you guys because um, radial engineering has been uh, a big part of my rig and, and my sound and, and my life. And you guys have always been there, where regardless of what part of the world I've been in, if I need <laughs> something to need a little pit stop, you guys have been there. So thank you so much. Our absolute pleasure. We're always uh, happy to help wherever you are. And uh, when, you, when you do hit the road, if you need anything, just uh, hit me up and uh, we'll make that happen. Um, uh, I want to uh, just sign off and um, say uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us here on Radial on uh, Radial on Record. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please subscribe, hit the notification bell for future uh, segments. And uh, I'm Jim Rhodes for Radial Engineering, and uh, we'll see you next time. Over and out. Over and out. See ya.